Hi Bookish Besties, my name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. And if you're already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, we're here to talk about the May Book of the Month selections. <music> So this is actually the very first video of its kind that I'm doing on my channel. If you have been with me for the past few months, you will know that every single month I come out and I do a prediction video where I try to predict what book of the month might feature as part of its monthly curated selections or as part of its add-on selections. And then the following month I will come on and I will recap how I did before going into the next month's prediction. Well, I decided that going forward, I was going to kind of separate that a little bit, that I was going to come on here and do this video, kind of recapping how I did with the predictions as well as talking about what books I select versus what I didn't select and why. And I don't anticipate these videos being very long at all. I just thought it would give me a little bit more time to discuss the selections as well as any of the books that were featured that I might not have talked about in that prediction video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. So for the month of May, Book of the Month had six curated monthly selections. The very first book that was featured was a book called Middle Tide by Sarah Crouch. Now this book was actually a very, very early release because this book is not actually expected to be out in the world until June. June 11th. And so it was definitely not on my radar for a May book of the month selection. As y'all know, when I do those prediction videos, I only talk about releases that are coming out in the month in question. So I would have only been talking about May releases. So a book coming out on June 11th would definitely not have been on my radar, but this is actually one that I did select and I added it to my May book of the month box. This is a piece of crime fiction that is set in the Pacific Northwest. And it seems like it's going to be incredibly atmospheric. That is why I love thrillers that are set in the Pacific Northwest. One Peaceful Morning in the small Puget Sound town of Point Orchard, the lifeless body of Dr. Aaron Landry is found hanging from a tree on the property of prodigal son and failed writer Elijah Leith. Sheriff Jim Godbout's initial investigation points to an obvious suicide, but upon closer inspection, there seems to be clues of foul play when he discovers that the circumstances of the beautiful doctor's death were ripped straight from the pages of Elijah Leith's own novel. Out of money and motivation, 33-year-old Elijah returns to his empty childhood home to lick the wounds of his futile writing career. Hungry for purpose, he throws himself into restoring the ramshackle cabin his father left behind and rekindling his relationship with Nikita, the extraordinary girl from the nearby reservation whom he betrayed but was never able to forget. As the town of Point Orchard turns against him, Elijah must fight for his innocence against an unexpected foe who is close and cunning enough to flawlessly frame him for murder in this scintillating literary thriller that seeks to uncover a case of love, loss, and revenge. This is a debut novel by Sarah Crouch. I thought that it sounded pretty intriguing, pretty compelling, and so this is one that I definitely added to my box. And just to be clear, I'm not going to be going through the synopsis of all of these books again if they were mentioned in that prediction video. I'm only going to be talking about the synopsis of the ones that I didn't feature previously just to give you an idea of what these books are about. So the next selection was Five Broken Blades by Mia Cortland which was one of my predictions. This is an adult fantasy novel which I believe is a story of vengeance. The blurb on Book of the Month says five killers unite for a high stakes quest to topple an unkillable king in this bloody exhilarating fantasy adventure. I actually really enjoy the sound of this. This is one that I would certainly be willing to read in the future but I did not put this in my box. And the reason is, is because I do not like my fantasies to be in the book of the month editions, especially when I know that there's likely going to be special editions of these released. So for that reason, I did not add this one to my box. The next one was a sci-fi book called The Ministry of Time by Callianne Bradley. And this is another one of the predictions that I made. This says, having trouble finding the love of your life, have you considered that you might be looking in the wrong century? So this is definitely a science fiction book that plays with time travel. Again, it was a prediction of mine. This is just not one that I really have any interest in reading. So it was just not a book that I picked for my May box. We also had The Return of Ellie Black by Amiko Jean, which was another one of my book of the month predictions. And this actually was the only other book that I put into my May book of the month box. I have never read anything by Amiko Jean. If I remember correctly, she currently has only written like YA contemporary romance stories, which I know are pretty beloved. And I'm really excited to see what she does in this genre. I was very intrigued by the synopsis of it. So I definitely picked this one up. Missing Girls and Small Town Secrets are not the only things hiding in the woods of this Pacific Northwest output. Okay, how funny. I didn't realize the connection. I didn't realize that both of the books that I selected this month were set in the Pacific Northwest. Obviously, I have a type. A lot of Jennifer Hillier's books are set in the Pacific Northwest. And I just, I love the atmosphere. You know, I lived there for a couple of years. I can picture it very, very clearly. So I always love books set in that area. And like I said, I'm really excited to see what Amiko Jean 
does with this genre. And this is certainly one that I'm going to look into getting into for June. And that's something I'm going to talk about a little bit later in the month. But yes, this will definitely satisfy something that I have going on in June. So I'm very much looking forward to getting to this. Another one of the books that I successfully predicted was the newest release by Christina Lauren that was featured and that's called The Paradise Problem. It says money makes people do strange things. For example, get married for a mega inheritance, then actually fall in love. This of course is going to contain that standard marriage of convenience trope where you need to marry in order to gain an inheritance. But of course, they're actually going to fall in love. This is not one that I added to my box because I am no longer a Christina Lauren reader. I will not read any of their books going forward. They just do not impress me as contemporary romance authors. But I know that a lot of people really, really enjoy them. So I'm excited for those who love Christina Lauren to have another opportunity to get their books in the book of the month edition. So again, I was correct about this one. And then the very final monthly curated selection for book of the month in May was the book called Real Americans by Rachel Kong. Now this is actually a book that came out on April 30th. So this was featured in my April book of the month prediction video. But as we know, books that are coming out later in a month, like that very last day of a month are just as likely to be featured in the next month as they are in their month of release. So I'm not surprised at all that book of the month decided to make this a May selection. It's just not one that I was going to talk about for May. This is a literary fiction and I will go ahead and run through the synopsis really quickly again, just in case you do not remember. It says Real Americans begins on the precipice of Y2K in New York City when 22 year old Lily Chen, an unpaid intern at a slick media company meets Matthew. Matthew is everything Lily is not, easygoing and effortlessly attractive, a native East Coaster and most notably heir to a vast pharmaceutical empire. Lily couldn't be more different. Flat broke, raised in Tampa, the only child of scientists who fled Mao's cultural revolution. Despite all of this, Lily and Matthew fall in love. In 2021, 15 year old Nick Chen has never felt like he belonged on the isolated Washington Island where he lives with his single mother, Lily. He can't shake the sense she's hiding something. When Nick sets out to find his biological father, the journey threatens to raise more questions than it answers. In immersive moving prose, Rachel Kong weaves a profound tale of class and striving, race and visibility, and family and inheritance, a story of trust, forgiveness, and finally coming home. So out of the six monthly curated selections that Book of the Month featured in May, I correctly predicted four of them, and one of them was one that I had predicted previously just for the wrong month. So I'm pretty happy with that output. All right, and then moving into their add-ons, they actually only had four new add-ons this time around. One of them was already released prior to the prediction video, so it was already actively available on their website. It was a memoir called Did I Ever Tell You by Genevieve Kingston, so I'm not going to really discuss that further here just because we already knew it was coming in. It was already on their website. The next add-on was Spinning Gold by Carmelia Locus, which was a prediction that I made in my May Book of the Month prediction video. As a reminder, this was a historical fiction and it says, vengeful spirits, spunky frauds, and all manner of queer affairs lurk in the shadows of this Gothic Parisian fable. This is just not a book that's up my alley and I knew that from the synopsis of it. So that is the main reason why I did not add this to my box, but it was a successful prediction. We also finally saw the newest release by Eric Larson put on as an add-on. It's called The Demon of Unrest. This again was a release that came out on April 30th. So it's no surprise to me that it was featured in May. This was another prediction that I had for April's book of the month. But again, because it came out at the end of the month, it's just as likely to be featured in May as it was in April. This says that it is epic civil war history from Eric Larson, which illuminates a dark American chapter. So if you are a fan of Eric Larson and you have read his books previously, this one is now available on book of the month. I attempted to read Devil in the White City by Eric Larson because I had heard so many amazing things about it, but I found it a little bit dry and boring. And so I actually DNF'd it and I really had no interest in picking up anything from Eric Larson again, even though I find his subject matter very, very compelling, very compelling, especially this one, which surrounds the civil war. But unfortunately, I just don't think he's the author for me. So I definitely did not add him to my box. But if you are a fan of his, like I said, you can now add him to your box for a future month in book of the month if you have not already done so. And then the very last add on was a book that was not on my radar at all. It is one that I had never heard of previously prior to seeing it on book of the month. It is a book called The Lady Waiting by Magdalena Zizak. It is a literary fiction novel and it says one bright Los Angeles day, a young Polish emigre named Viva is driving along the freeway when she's flagged down by a dazzling disheveled woman in green chiffon. The woman is Bobby Sleeper, a fellow Eastern European and an erstwhile art gallerist with a mysterious background and even more mysterious filmmaker husband. Within days, the couple hire Viva as their assistant, then enlist her as an accomplice in an improbable scheme involving a long lost Vermeer masterwork, a multi-million dollar reward and several shadowy ex-husbands. As Bobby and her husband weave her ever more tightly into their web, Viva is swept up in an escapade that's one part art heist, one part love triangle, and one part education of a felon. Entranced by their lifestyle, alarmed by their ramshackle scam, Viva realizes she's out of her depth and that only luck, cunning, and her own hustler's instinct can save her. The Lady Waiting is a page turning caper, a cavalcade of 21st century sins, rapacious capitalism, shameless fraud, and atrocious behavior, and a showcase for three of the biggest and most unforgettable characters in recent fiction. So that actually sounds a little bit intriguing, but I wasn't 
100% sold. So this is not one that I added to my box, but like I said, that was definitely an interesting premise. If you have read this book or if you selected this for your box, you're gonna have to let me know what you think because this is one that I had never heard of and I'm a little bit intrigued. All right, everybody, that is it. That is my overview of the May book of the month selections, what I picked and what I passed on. Please, of course, comment down below and let me know if you are a book of the month subscriber, what did you pick for the month or did you pass completely? I would love to know. Or if you made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me a thumbs up emoji to let me know that you were here. And please also let me know what you were thinking about this new video series. Like I said, these videos are not going to be insanely long or in-depth or complicated or anything. It's meant to just give me a little bit more time to discuss the book of the month selections, what I picked, why I picked what I picked and what I passed on. So as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I typically post two videos a week, one on Wednesdays, one on Sundays, and I would love to see you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which I always leave linked down below along with any books that I may talk about in a video. Until next time, y'all. Bye.